Hey, what's going on, everybody? In this video, we're talking about So Rare Week 17. Looking at some of my favorite plays right now on Thursday night. And also going to be putting out more picks closer to the lock time on Twitter. So if you don't follow me on Twitter, it's linked down in the description. Also, if you're not on So Rare, you're here from NBA Top Shot. Sign up with the link in the description and the pinned comment. You'll get cards for free. Also, if you do five auctions, you'll get a limited card for free, which can be like $300 for Giannis or something crazy like that. So definitely check it out. It's a lot of fun to play as well. And also, if you're not into Top Shot, uh, right now could be a good time to get in because it's really low right now. And you get $15 for free for signing with the link in my description and also in my last video if you didn't watch it on top shot they're doing some kind of giveaway thing for the holidays so i've been giving away a lot of moments to my subscribers on youtube so definitely comment on that video and i'll probably send you something i don't have unlimited supply of moments i could send out here but i'll probably send you something and this Luca in particular, talked about it in my last video, but the video game numbers, people really like this set. Uh, I'm not really sure why. I guess it's pretty cool. It's supposed to be about massive games players have had. But you can see it came out and it was selling in the 90s here on Evaluate Market and then was holding strong at up in the hundreds, a lot of sales in the hundreds. And now it's climbed its way up to 119. So this one just keeps rising up. Uh, people like this set, I guess, and obviously they like Luca as well. And a lot of cool updates on Top Shot, so check that one out. But now back to So Rare. So how I did in week 16, I put out a lot of picks for you guys. A lot of them did really well, including Rudy Gobert here, who I talked so much about. His cap was 28. Played him here. He got a 48. This lineup I thought was going to do really well. I was in 70th place or something at the end of the first night. And somehow I just got passed up. I mean, Luca was 64, Giannis was 56, Gobert 48, Tyus Jones hit a 51, Deadman even at a cap of like 14 or something exceeded his points at 21. And this had a chance to go nuclear. Part of my strategy on the bigger slates where teams actually have three games compared to these smaller slates where teams only can have two max really because it's only friday saturday sunday you can get a lot of these guys that are on back-to-backs backups and the backups will get thrust into the starting lineup maybe go from 12 15 minutes a game to 25 30. that's what i was hoping for deadman and i almost hit it hit the nail on the head because bam adebayo who actually played over here is resting on the second night of his back-to-back, -back, but unfortunately, Deadman is injured and not playing. So, almost had that happen for me there. And I'll talk another bit about that in, in a second an example. But then we got Okongu over here, who I'm going to talk a lot more about in this video. This lineup has a chance here. Also, I'm in 3,000th, but Sark didn't play in the first game. Hopefully, he's going to play tonight. Kennard also could play without Kawhi and Paul George and put up more than 25, and this could be a good lineup as well. Moving down to my limited uh, contest, because I don't play in the rare because they're too expensive. Pretty good here as well. This one, I still have a chance. If Deadman played again, I would have more of a chance. Also, I need Balmero to do something tonight. And Moses Brown is another one of those players who I played because was hoping that on a back-to-back -back, the Clippers had three games that they would rest a lot of their guys including Zubats but it's not clear yet if Zubats is resting for tonight's game if he does this lineup is looking pretty good hopefully Brown would get over 20 maybe even over 30 if he starts and I mean he has the ceiling to get like 40 50 honestly if he does start so this one could go nuclear over here. Still, wait, still waiting on Adams to play and Olenek to have a good game. And that one has a chance, I guess. Not a, a great chance, though. So. so let's come look at the upcoming contest. Essentially the same as we had for the last week. But we can look here and you can just see that no teams have three games. Because that would be meaning they played Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. 
So you're not going to get three games on this slate, but we could be targeting guys with two games. So make sure you're looking at that if that matters to you. But there's also a chance some of these guys with one game have huge scores as well. So I don't think it matters as much on this slate, but it does if they have three games compared to just one. But two versus one doesn't matter as much in my opinion. So not a ton of injury news we have right now. But if we come over to the manager sales, I do recommend trying to buy these on the auction since you can get some good deals on the auction compared to this or sending out offers. But one thing that is to note is Maxi Kleber is out for the Mavericks. He actually plays pretty big minutes for a big man. So what I went out and did is I went out and bought a JaVale McGee which is actually a little under the radar purchase. And I also bought a Dwight Powell. And let's see the floor for these guys right now. We got McGee's at six bucks, 633, and Powell's at 887. So I believe I paid $4 for a McGee, and I think I did pay eight bucks for a Powell. But McGee hasn't really played much at all after being the starter, and maybe they'll give him another chance to be a starter. A cap of just eight. Even if they're giving him 15 to 20 minutes, McGee can always hit a big game. You see 24 in the middle of all these DNPs. That's probably some garbage time game. So even if he gets 15 minutes, he can put up 20 easily. Powell caps 11 is pretty low. He's not a great fantasy player. But maybe he picks up five extra minutes per night without Bertans, maybe even more, maybe even 10 extra minutes, and he can get you something in the 20s. I do like both of those guys. The other guy that could benefit from this, benefit from this is Davis Bertans. And actually, Maxi Kleber's out for a long time. I think it was six to eight weeks. So I kind of like having a Bertans as well and kind of just sitting on these three guys and seeing which one really is going to get this big boost in minutes. I mean, combine all these guys, what are you you're paying 20 bucks? I mean, if one of these guys starts just going off at these low caps here, they're going to go, their price is going to go above 20 and then you can either play a really good player or sell it. And I actually have a Bertans as well. Let's just come look at my cards real quick. You can see bought that McGee and Powell and then Bertans was actually a reward here for me. So I got that one for free from a contest. So back to the injury news, the only really other big news that we have that would affect moments right now is going to be Clint Capella being out. And that directly affects Kongu here. Let's see what his price is up to. It's up to 28. And if someone buys that, it's up to 32. Way up there. His cap's just 18. You saw he hit a 32 or it was a 30 i guess the two percent came from my five percent boost or whatever he hit a 30 25 and a 27 and these is all playing under 30 minutes if he gets over 30 minutes a big score over 30 maybe even in the 40s or 50 could be crazy but i do like a congo a lot but his price is now way up there I do own in a Kongu, and basically how I decide if I'm going to play them or sell them is I build my lineups out, and if I have some leftover guys on the bench that are around the same cap that I think could score uh, or have like a possible high, high same ceiling as, as a player like a Kongu, I'll be like, all right. I'll take a Kongu out of my lineup, put this guy in, because I just don't want to leave guys on my bench like that, and I'll sell a Kongu if I'm not going to be playing him. And I think this guy is just as good as a play or maybe a little worse of a play. I'll still play him and take my profits on a guy like a Kongu. That's just my strategy personally. But um, that's what how I'm going to be going forward with my Kongu that I have, my limited Kongu. And then the other guy that this could affect a little bit is Jalen Johnson. His price down to 11, which is pretty affordable with a 14 cap. And then also AJ Griffin. These guys will probably pick up a few more minutes. Griffin is 17, but his cap's up to 21. I do like Jalen Johnson better at just 11. Uh, potential pickup there. And at this price, you could pick him up and play him. 
and then I believe Capella is out a week or two, and then come Monday, if Johnson has a big game over the weekend with Capella out, I could see this price going up a lot. So you could even just play him this weekend, then flip it next weekend, assuming he has a big game with, with Capella out. So that's really all the injury news for value we have right now. Again, follow me on Twitter for some more value. Now let's go check out players for higher salaries, which I like to look at as well. So on so rare data, I come over here to scout player rankings, basketball, and you can see this. So you can see their score in the last 10 games compared to their 2022 average. So I like to target guys here that are act that have lower average in their last 10 than 2022. So you can see right off the bat, Luca, his last 10 is lower. So you're getting a fairly good value play if you play a Luca. You can save like three on your cap, essentially, compared to like uh, Embiid. If you're playing him at a 63, but his average is only 50, 53 for the season, you're kind of losing out on 10 points to build your lineups, if that makes sense. So some guys that I recognized here, further down the list, because I'm not willing to pay 150, 250 bucks for some of these guys up top. The guys here I like, again, DeJounte Murray might be out another week. But you're getting a guy at a 34 cap that's averaged over 40. And you might just have to wait it out. But you could probably get a pretty good price this week on a Murray, one of the lowest all season, because he's been out. He's going to be out for this slate and the next week's slate of games. Trey Young's another one. His is about his last 10 is about three under. But he's going to get more usage in these next two weeks. No Capella, no DeJounte Murray. So Trey Young, his usage is going to be going up and his caps only at 40 right now which is pretty low the other one i'm pretty sure brandon ingram is still out for the pelicans so i do like mccollum just 32 cap with a 35.3 average so you're getting under the cap there as well um, so that's how i like to look at this one last guy it's actually right here ban 31 in his last 10, but averaged over 35 on the season. And he's been in a little bit of a slump, but he did have a pretty big game recently. And I think he can get back on track and start getting 40, 50 point so rare games here. And the other one I actually like who I talked about last week at a 48 point game, Go Bear. His caps all the way up to 32 now. I think it was 28 last week when I recommended him. But still, he's been having games in the 40s, 50s. I like Go Bear. I think he's finally breaking out, especially without Cat in the lineup. He's doing a lot better. All right, guys, so that's all I have for this one. Follow me on Twitter. Check out Top Shot and the other videos on Top Shot I made. And also, um, if you're not on so rare or Top Shot, sign up for both of them. The links will be there, and I'll catch you guys in another video.